Hello and welcome back to the test branch of Oxygen Not Included. Today I wanted to focus on what I think is the most important and impactful building in all of the new update. This is something I think is going to become the cornerstone of how we play the game going forward if nothing about it is changed and that is the ethanol distiller. This is an incredibly powerful building at least in its current form. Maybe they'll nerf it, maybe they'll change it, but right now it's one of the strongest things you have going in Oxygen Not Included and let's get into today why that is and show off a build that, that really illustrates how easy it is to set the system up and how much how much it brings to the table as a technology. So the ethanol distiller uses 750 grams per second of lumber produces roughly 500 grams per second of ethanol. It's a little bit more. I'm not exactly sure why. It produces polluted dirt in fairly large quantities and carbon dioxide and a decent amount of heat uh, as a byproduct. Um, roughly one arbor tree is sufficient to supply an ethanol distiller. This ethanol distiller requires 750 grams per second. Um, there's sometimes a bug with the arbor tree where you'll, where you'll harvest a branch and it won't give you any lumber. And that's a little bit of a downside that happens to me maybe one-fifth of the time. But assuming that all seven of these branches are being correctly harvested, they'll be harvested once every four and a half cycles, and each one will yield 300 kilograms of lumber. And that works out to just roughly a little bit more than 750 grams per second. It's 777 grams per second. So you can have a little bit of downtime on these trees and still basically have one tree be able to supply one ethanol distiller. And you can take all that ethanol and run it through a petroleum generator. This petroleum generator will consume uh, two kilograms per second of fuel, in this case ethanol, and output uh, 750 kilograms or 750 grams per second of polluted water and 500 grams per second of carbon dioxide, along with 2,000 uh, watts of power. Half of that is going to go to power your ethanol distillers, but 1,000 of that can go off and, and power anything else, right? In fact, you want it to go off and power something else because the more you run this petroleum generator, the more polluted water you're gonna generate. And the amount of polluted water that you generate is more than sufficient to cover the cost of, of feeding these, uh, these trees. Each of these trees is gonna require 35 kilograms of polluted water per cycle. Uh, this system right here is gonna produce, uh, produce a lot more. It's 750 grams per second, right? 600 seconds in a day. You're gonna net a lot of polluted water if you're running thing, this thing all the time. If you're not running this thing all the time, then you're gonna be doing what I do because I have this hooked up to a smart battery with automation. You're gonna be building up a supply, a reserve of uh, ethanol as a fuel. But you could just not have an automation wire here, have this thing run the entire time, generate as much polluted water as you can and start netting yourself polluted water. I haven't been running this thing for very long, but already I'm accumulating a lot of polluted water in these tanks right here. And this is insanely strong. This little setup that I have right here does not take much duplicate labor to manage, right? The duplicates will come by, they'll deliver some uh, phosphorite to this, which is one of the inputs, but that's really easy to get. Um, they will harvest the trees, they'll move the lumber down to, well, first the storage bin and then to these ethanol distillers. And that's basically it. You can have just a, a couple farmers really running a lot of trees in your system and it's going to net you a ton of great stuff. Power, polluted water, which is awesome because it means you can sustain pretty much as many duplicates as you want on any base just by multiplying this build over and over and over again. And it produces, as a byproduct of the ethanol distiller, it produces polluted dirt, which you can compost into dirt or just let it you know, evaporate into polluted oxygen and clean up the oxygen like I'm kind of doing right here with these deodorizers. Um, but you have access now to large scale dirt production an infinitely renewable, infinitely scalable source of water, an infinitely scalable source of power, and it really doesn't cost you that much at all to run this. A little bit of duplicate labor, and then some sort of cooling solution, because each of these things does produce a decent amount of heat. Right? We see that these are starting to get hot now after I've been running them for a long time. But this is gonna net you all the resources that you need to run a base. Dirt to produce whatever food that you want, you can produce sleet wheat now if you want. Before, long-term long dirt production was a big headache. Now, it's really easy with the system. <clears throat> you have polluted water, which you can use for your heating cooling solutions, uh, and then take the water that you end up generating and turn it, that into oxygen, and generate hydrogen that way for your space fuel. This little build right here, I think is gonna be the cornerstone of, of everything going forward, unless you know they change the game or change the system because it produces everything that you want. It produces power, it produces water, it produces 
through water everything else that you could want space fuel oxygen it generates a ton of co2 as well this is maybe a downside in the early game but late game you're going to take all this co2 and feed it to slicksters and generate oil through that process so it's more space fuel more power more everything i think the system is crazy let me just go over how i've set things up right here first our plumbing we have our ethanol distilleries um, I have these bridges just so the flow is, is nice and even and all the packets know exactly where they need to move, right? All of them are moving down this road. Um, this is dumping all of the ethanol into a fuel tank that is connected to this uh, petroleum generator, which also works again off of ethanol. Uh, then there is a pump in this room to catch the polluted water that just kind of comes off of this uh, petroleum generator, pumps it into a storage tank, <coughs> And that storage tank, uh, this, this system has priority, so it will renew this storage tank over anything else, and it'll pump the polluted water out to these trees, and then the excess polluted water is gonna go into some storage area down here. You can set up whatever storage area you want, uh, but we have a nice system where the resupply of these trees takes priority and any excess goes somewhere else, plus these buffers in the system to make sure that we can kind of have some excess going through here. Uh, and then, Power-wise, pretty simple. I've just hooked up this stuff over here. I did have to jumpstart the system with uh, some, some manual generators, so there's some remnants of that, but power just hooked up like this, and then excess power can go off to some line over here or over here. Uh, I have a little bit of storage in the storage bin, <clears throat> and that's basically it. That's all the system is. You'd wanna add a little bit of a cooling solution to this, basically because you're producing in every single one of these cells uh, roughly speaking, about 20 uh, kilodTUs of heat, which eventually will cook things, but that's not even that much in the grand scheme of things. Uh, so this is a really simple problem to solve. And there you have it. I don't think the, the video needs to be any longer than this. Infinite power, infinite water, infinite dirt, tons of CO2, um, tons of everything that you need for your base with this building right here. I think this is the big major change in this patch. This is going to be the thing that changes the way that we play the game. I think there's a lot of cool stuff in this patch and I'm going to go over that stuff in separate videos, but I wanted to get this one out there quick because I think this is the big thing, the number one thing you need to be aware of uh, going forward in the game. All right, that's it for this episode. I'll catch you guys next time.